The history of technical vocational education in Uganda is one of promise, struggle, and eventual prosperity of a young nation seeking to transition from a peasant and low-income country to a prosperous middle-income country. In order to achieve this, the government made a deliberate move to transform and revitalize technical and vocational education after numerous studies had shown a need for more competence-based skills. Statistics by Trading Economics revealed a grueling unemployment rate, forecasting a 2.50% increase as of the year 2022. There was a need to redirect its efforts to take advantage of the available labor resources. In, in, in 2012, His Excellency the President himself launched what we call the Skilling Uganda Program. Uh, that was a, a bit of a strategy, actually, but we codenamed it the Skilling Uganda Program because it's something that covers everyone. So over the past years, we have been implementing that strategic plan, really. And that is why you see the many things, the many improvements that we are now seeing in the DVET subsector. It is all came from that strategy. Our population is a young population, and we need to employ our young population. We need, it, there is a lot of energy in our population, and we need to employ that energy. So you can only employ that energy when you can give employment to the people, when you can skill them to do something, when you can challenge their minds, their hands, and their heart. And that is exactly what Tibet is supposed to do, and that's what we are struggling to do. It has been nine years since the government, through National Planning Authority, in consultation with other government institutions and other stakeholders, launched Uganda's Vision 2040 on the 18th of April 2013. Vision 2040 is conceptualized around strengthening the fundamentals of the economy so as to harness the abundant opportunities around the country. As an integral component, reforms in the education system and curricula were to take center position. Uh, UPIC was established in 2009 uh, following a directive from His Excellency, the president of this country, that we have an institution domiciled in Uganda to offer middle-level petroleum training for Ugandans. UPICA benefited from the discussions uh, in the Northern Corridor Summit. Uh, this was a discussion by the heads of states, and in that summit it was agreed that there are two institutions in Uganda that uh, should become centers of excellence for oil and gas training. One is Uganda Petroleum Institute Chigumba, and the other one is Uganda Technical College Kichwamba. Centers of excellence are, it's where you can go for, for, for modeling, really. And uh, that is something that we have not had in the past. But we've seen countries, really, that have developed. They have those centers where all others around. At least you can go there and get ideas, you can go there and learn new things, you can go there and get advice, you can, you know, ju just benchmark for your own good. And I think we need that. One of the major challenges the TVET sector faced is a lack of training facilities to provide highly practical, competency-based training to students. We've seen a dramatic change uh, on the landscape of the Institute. And, and this uh, was boosted by, uh, mostly by the World Bank funded uh, Albert Heinrich Region Sustainable Development Project, uh, which has seen us attain a lot of infrastructure that we probably would have taken a very long time if we didn't have that project coming. The Albertine Region Sustainable Development Project. What is the ARSDP? How did this project come about? What was it supposed to achieve? And what were its components? In the, the early development of the institution, we did the institutional development plan. That institutional development plan identified a lot of gray areas that needed support, including uh, infrastructure, uh, curriculum development, the training of the necessary human resource, and of course, uh, most importantly, the equipment to facilitate the training. And hence, 
this project uh, was developed to address those specific demands uh, of the institution. Institutional development of key policies and proper governance structures took center stage in project implementation. Policies in the form of laws, procedures, regulations, administrative actions, incentives, and voluntary practices have been developed so as to ensure that the institutions are able to adapt and meet global standards in the petroleum industry. Initially, we had very many gaps. We had the assessment of the institution to deliver PITO in 2016, and the gaps were eminent. We had the uh, assessment under city and guild, the gaps were many. And all of them were in, uh, related to organizational development, the pro policies, processes, uh, the, the training of instructors, and of course the infrastructure in general. But these have been abridged, we have addressed those gaps through the project, and the hands who have been in position now to act acquire almost all the accreditations that the industry requires. The curriculum development process was embarked on with expert guidance from the twinning institutions who provided professional leadership, advice and support to UPIC and UTC Kichwamba. There was a requirement that we partner with an international uh, institution uh, or body that has done this over time. Finally, we narrowed to uh, IFP of France, IFP Training of France. IFP of Training of France has been in the oil and gas business for a while in terms of training of uh, human resource and then uh, uh, basically consultancies. We had to partner from institutions abroad uh, that brought in the kind of technology that we are longing to have that we did not have. And so all this training is actually a result of partnership, which we are very grateful about. Past studies conducted by reputable agencies showed that Uganda scored highly in providing formal education to its citizens. However, this did not translate to lucrative job opportunities for the country's populace. Government's long-term plan to boost employability entailed enabling the population build skills that employers needed and those that are crucial to the development of Uganda. The bursaries, the bursaries focused on, on the people of the Albertine region. And so that is already a way in which the community is benefiting. I was like, oh my God, now we've got a chance to also get involved in oil because uh, they were, it was kind of advertising in our local place. If you have the ability to go and study, now chances are open for local people to also join. Ah, why? Being provided with this quality and uh, international accredited course, I feel privileged. Hmm? And I'm seeing my future is bright because of this provision. Hmm. Because having an international certificate is also not easy. Actually, I'm grateful to this project. These, these um, courses are so expensive. And the government coming out to give you such a chance. It's so great. Mm. The country's focus shifted from courses, academic papers and certificates to occupation, work competences and extensive skills that would help deliver the manpower that will develop the country's petroleum industry. My experience here has changed my thinking. Having taken course skills, you cannot get stuck. Myself, I'm from the university. <laughs> Yeah, I have a bachelor's in development studies. Uh, those things of uh, uh, administrative law, what, what. But I diverted, I'm like, oh, if I add on taking course part of it, it will be so valid than just being there, waiting to be employed. So I came, I, I woke up. Actually, I first went for health and safety. After that, I developed interest and joined taking course part of it. So. All my thinking was like, oh, my work is in office, I should go get a pen, write, what, what, compile papers. But when I came and taken a copy out of it, I'm like, mm. now it is all about getting in. You do these things yourself. We are emphasizing hands-on more than ever before. 
we are emphasizing the link between what we do in school and what we do in the world of work more than ever before. And that's why even when we go for curriculum and all those, we now want to involve the private sector, the world of work in whatever we do. And it's already paying off because right now we have uh, an MOU, for example, with Total, and uh, we couldn't have had that if we hadn't attained all this which we got from. If we didn't have Opito, we didn't have all these other great issues, if we didn't have the training equipment, there is no way uh, Total would sign an MOU that they send their future employees. Because whoever goes through that program and succeeds, up to 120, 150 people, they will automatically be employed. They will not go out looking for work. The Sector Skills Council used a hands-on approach in bringing together industry employers, instructors and the twinning partners to deliver a comprehensive curricula that will produce a ready-for-work product. The student produced out of the new TIVET will be a global standard worker who can take on any skills work across the new world. I'm so competent now, I can say. <laughs> I can do the lifting, slinging, the signaling. I can, uh, I can install accessories. I can inspect the accessories for damages and what. So for sure, I can deliver. <laughs>